Hello friends, this video on waves part 17 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 16 before going ahead with part 17. So what is reflection of waves? We have studied about reflection of light, right? What is that? Bouncing back of light when it strikes a surface, right? So even in case of waves, what is it? It is nothing but the change in the direction of a wave upon striking the interface between two medium. When a wave strike any surface or any interface between two medium, the response of the wave is known as reflection or the bouncing back of the wave is termed as reflection. So now the interface can be of two categories. I mean we can categorize the interface broadly into two types. One is known as an open boundary and the other one is closed boundary. So when I talk of an open boundary, I mean that the wave which falls on the interface gets reflected as well as refracted. That is a part of it will come back and the part of it will go beyond the boundary. When I talk of a closed boundary or a rigid boundary, that means the wave which is incident will get completely reflected back. So now we will look at the reflection at both rigid boundary as well as open boundary. So basically two kinds of boundary, open boundary and closed boundary. So these are the two boundaries which we have. So when I talk of reflection, it is something like this, a wave going, striking a surface and then coming back. This is a general thought which we get when we talk of reflection. So let us look at reflection at rigid boundary. When the boundary is a closed boundary, the wave cannot go beyond the boundary. So what happens in this case? The good, a, a, a very good example which you, you can think in your mind is echo. When you speak uh, between uh, in a region where it is surrounded by mountains all around, so it is a closed region. If you shout, the your voice gets repeated over and again. That's because the reflection keeps taking place as your as the sound reaches or strikes the walls. So at a rigid boundary, what happens is the pulse arrives, hits the wall, exerts force on the wall. I mean, let us suppose this is the wave which travels or which is incident on this wall. It goes, hits the wall, exerts force on the wall. By Newton's third law, the wall also exerts an equal and opposite force on the string. Now since the wall is rigid, so it will not move because we have considered that the boundary is rigid. So the wall cannot move. Therefore, no wave is generated at the boundary. So exactly at the boundary, when the wave reaches this point, at that point, no wave gets generated because the wall cannot move at all. That means the amplitude at the boundary is zero. At this particular point, the amplitude is zero. So this is possible only when the reflected wave and the incident wave are completely out of phase. That means at this particular point, at the boundary, your amplitude is zero. When do you have an, the amplitude zero? When two waves superimpose, which are completely out of phase. So what are the two waves here? One wave is the incident wave, that is the wave which is striking, that is the incident wave and the wave which is getting reflected, that is the reflected wave. So that means these two waves are completely out of phase at the boundary. That means at boundary amplitude is zero as the wall cannot move. Therefore, the two waves are out of phase completely. Right? Therefore, phi is equal to pi. This denotes two waves are completely out of phase. Therefore, we say that if y1, that is the for incident wave, let us say this is for incident wave, y1 is equal to a sine kx minus omega t, then y2, that is the reflected wave, will be equal to a sine kx minus omega t, plus pi. So by trigonometric relations, we, you can write it as minus a sine kx minus omega t. 
So you can say y that is superposition y1 plus y2 will give you 0. So what do you conclude here? Here we conclude that on reflection at a rigid boundary, a phase reversal takes place by pi. That means the incident wave when reaches a rigid boundary, it gets reflected and a phase reversal takes place. That is its phase gets reversed by pi. So this is the wave incident. This is the reflected wave. So the conclusion is reflection at a rigid boundary will take place with a phase reversal of pi or 180 degrees. Now let us look at the reflection at an open boundary. When we talk of an open boundary, the boundary is not rigid. So, bound, so reflection at an open boundary will take place without any phase change. So there is no phase change that takes place. Because in the previous case, phase change took place because the boundary was rigid. Therefore, the amplitude at the boundary was equal to zero. But in this case, at boundary, pulse gets generated. Therefore, the displacement is maximum. So in this case, what happens? Let us suppose if this is your boundary. In this boundary, the boundary is not rigid. It is movable. So at the boundary, pulse get generated. So in this case, what happens? At boundary, pulse is generated. Therefore, at the boundary, your amplitude is maximum. So the amplitude is maximum. That means the phase difference is zero. That means the incident wave and the reflected wave both are in the same phase. Both are in same phase. That is, there is no phase change which takes place while reflection at an open boundary. So I hope that the concept of reflection of waves is clear to you now and you also understood how superposition of waves play an important role in reflection of waves. So even here you can see that if y1 represents the incident wave that is a sine kx minus omega t then the reflected wave will also be represented by a sine kx minus omega t because both are in the same phase. Therefore, the resultant wave would be nothing but 2a sin kx minus omega t. Now that we have covered almost everything related to a traveling wave as well as I have also explained to you the superposition of waves in detail. So hereafter when we go ahead to this last half of this lesson, we will study about standing waves and two important phenomena that is beats and Doppler effect. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.